Hey guys, I hope you had a great weekend. I personally had an awesome weekend. I had a wedding in the North Carolina mountains, so got to spend some time up there and just relax. And now I'm back and ready to get started on the week. Um, so wanted to kind of take a break from what we've been talking about of how to like kind of storytell as an artist and building out the process. Um, and I really wanted to give you just some practical knowledge, just kind of a quick little tutorial. Um, so I had, I do a lot of commissions. Um, so with the live event painting, I can't be at all of the weddings that I get asked to be at. Um, I can, I'm only one person, I can only do one wedding at a time. So I offer um, to do commission paintings from a photograph. So whether it's like an engagement photo or um, a picture from the wedding after the fact, um, I will do paintings from a photograph. So when I do that, I always do grids. Um, so I have a picture right here, very random picture. I just found it in my stash of images. It's a picture of a vinyl skirt. Um, I didn't wanna use any of my pictures of um, couples that I'm working on now because some of them are surprises. So just wanted to pick something random that you guys wouldn't, wouldn't bother the eye or anything. Um, I want you to be more focused on the lines, less on the picture. So, uh, basically what I'm going to show you guys is how to build a grid without using measurements. So when I was in high school, I was taught to do like a box grid. So you have your horizontal lines and your vertical lines and you do it by measurements. You do like half inch, inch, whatever. And then depending on the size of your canvas, you went out and I mean, you can get so specific to where it's like, oh, each box is one inch and three sixteenths, you know? So that, um, and it's a great way to do it. But when I um, was in SCAD, I took a life drawing class, which was, I was painting live figures. Um, and so the, my professor there taught me how to do this without taking, there is one measurement you have to take, but besides that, you really aren't using any measurements. So all you're gonna need is pencil, pen, and I have a yardstick for a ruler because some of my paintings are pretty big, so I need something extra long. So what I like to do for my image is I will always, everyone's different, but I like to use a pen when I'm doing my grid on my, um, on my image. Now on a canvas, I like to use a softer pencil because you don't want to make uh, indents in the canvas. So I use a pencil. You don't want to use something that's too light that you're going to start smearing it. Um, something that's light enough that you don't have to push super hard and make like divots into the canvas. So to get started, I have my pen. Sometimes I'll use um, a colored pen. Like this one, I probably should use a colored pen um, because there's a lot of dark spaces, but I think I'll be fine with this black one for now. Um, so anyways, I have my pen and my ruler. So the first mark you're going to make is going from corner to corner. So you're gonna go from opposite end to opposite corner like this. So by doing that, you're gonna create an X shape. And this, this process is very repetitive. So you just kind of have to pay attention to how, um, like what step it is. So you first make an X and then, so you basically go diagonals and then horizontals, verticals, um, which will make sense as we go along. But this is my first mark, it's kind of faint but you can see right here and here. So the next one we're gonna do is, so we did an X, now we're gonna do a cross. So we're gonna go from the middle of this line all the way through here. So that's gonna go through this point. And then we're gonna do the same thing from these two sides. So we're doing like a little cross. Now to find the center, so this is the one measurement I said you need to take. So when you do this, you wanna take the measurement from the center of this X out to the side, each side. So my, this measurement is measuring two and a half. So I'm gonna go up to the top and measure from this side into the middle two and a half because that should be the center of this line. Got one right here. 
And you want to do it on both sides unless you have like a, um, a T square or um, like an L shaped ruler. Or I have those with in the fashion world. Um, so I did that through the top and bottom, as you can see, going this way. So I'm going to do the same thing horizontally. So that is three and three fourths of an inch. So we'll do that on both sides. And then you want to connect them and you want to make sure these lines, I'm doing this pretty fast. So mine's not going to be perfect, but you want to make sure that all your points are ending up in the center and you don't, the, the more you throw off that, you want it to look like a perfect, like little target almost in a way. Um, Cause the more that these lines get jumbled, the more, the off, more off um, the proportions will be. So this is the first step. You're done with the measurements. You still need the ruler for straight lines, but that's what you do. So that is kind of finishes the little process that I talked about. And next you're going to basically do that all over again, but within the little squares that you just made. So if you look, you now have four separate boxes that we need to make X's in. So right now there's one line. So see, there's one line going through this box. So we need to cross that, make another X right there. And same thing on this side, we have an, one line, but we need to make an X. So we're gonna draw it from this point. So you're gonna connect this point to this one to finish that X. And you're gonna do it for all four boxes. So when you do this, you basically, like I said, you're just going from X's. So you're doing X's, then you're um, doing your horizontal and vertical lines, and then you basically start over again. So like this is so, so much easier than the traditional like box method. All right. So we have, as you can see, X's in each box. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna connect these, the center of these, and we're gonna do vertical line here from top to bottom, vertical line here from top to bottom. And instead of measuring, we use this, this little X right here in the middle of it to line up to make a straight line. So we use these two, and then we'll do it the same way horizontal through these. So I'll do that really quick. Another cool thing about this process is that you can literally do it like infinitely. Like this process, you can continue to do it as small as you want. So I'm not going to do it. I, I, I go really um, into detail and do a lot of these when I am doing faces or like in figures from a photograph because you want to make sure that it is accurate. Uh, so now, as you can see, I by doing those horizontal and vertical lines, I've started over this little box process. So if you look at, at each individual box that I just created by those lines, you see that I only have part of the X. So you need to go back and make the X. So again, you use this line, this point, and this one, and you cross those. I'm gonna go ahead and do that again. And you do it on each side. So sometimes if you notice, you're like, oh, like I did it all on one side and then you forgot to do it on the other. So just make sure that you're using all of the lines. And again, like since we're doing this kind of X, like these vertical lines and horizontal lines and then the diagonal lines, all you should be marking through these points every single time. Um, and like I've said, this is like, this process is just so much easier, so much quicker. So this is gonna be, I think the last, last little grid that I do, because I'm gonna show you how to transfer it onto a canvas. All right. So now you can see we have all these boxes with these X shapes. 
So that means we're complete. And if you want to keep going farther than that, you again, start again. So you want to cross all of these points to do the verticals and the horizontals. But since we're just doing this for a tutorial purpose, I'm not going to go any farther because it's a repetitive process. So now I'm going to show you how to transfer it onto the canvas. So this is a like uh, 16 by 20 inch canvas. And clearly, I mean, this is a lot smaller. So I don't typically do this just because I've been doing it for so long, but to make it easier on you guys kind of to visualize it, I'm gonna cut my photograph out um, so that I can show you what a true like um, proportion comparison would be. So I'm just gonna cut this out. And then we're going to place it into the corner of this canvas, okay? So we have it like that. So what we're gonna do, and it's kind of crazy, like if, it makes sense, but if you haven't heard of this before, it's kind of interesting. So what you can do is, you, this big first X that we made, this line from corner to corner, we're going to use that and extend the line from corner, from this corner up to see if we, what the true um, dimension is. So that's what it would look like. So what you would wanna do, because since this line doesn't go directly to the corner, I'll show you. I'm going to use my pencil just so you can kind of understand. So I'm going to draw from the corner through the photo, through this corner, and up. So take a look at this. The line, it's kind of faint. I didn't want to make it too dark. It ends up here. So that means that this isn't a, an exact, um, it won't be an exact replication. So what I like to do is I, I decide, depending on what the photo is, I wanna center it in the photo or into the canvas, and then I'll extend the sides out. So say I'm doing a family portrait. It's a beautiful background of oak trees. So if I'm a little bit off, so here I'm, an, I'm about an inch off. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna center this photo and bring it in half of an inch and redraw the line, okay? So the reason I do this is so that it's gonna bring this photograph into the center. So again, I'm still, I'm still off, I'm not in the center, but what I can, can do is I can extend those trees out a little bit further. So this is the new line I'm gonna use, all right? So I, what I do is I mark this side out a half an inch, and then each side I'm gonna draw a little line so that I know that like this is where my paper ends. Cut. And I'm not, this isn't completely exact, but for the purpose of the video, it will do. All right. So now you can see I've blocked in these two sides. So if this were to be a perfect size canvas to bring to blow this up, it would be half an inch smaller on each side. But what I would do, like in this case, is I would just extend that background out a little bit. No one will notice, um, especially because the image is going to stay in proportion it's just extended out a little bit. So now we're going to, I'm gonna use this photo that, or this line that goes to the corner. See how now that touches the corner? So I'm gonna extend that line. That's gonna be our line that we use down to this corner, not the corner of the canvas, the corner where the line touches. And I'm gonna start that X process all over again. So again, starting with that one big X. And we'll just, if I, if you wanted to, you could um, erase that line, which 
I usually do, but I don't have an eraser on me right now. So just gonna leave it. So we have that one big X. So again, repeating the process, what we do, you're gonna measure where that center line ends to get that, the center of the canvas. So it should be in the middle. So obviously it's eight inches. So on each um, horizontal line, we're gonna do eight inches out. connect it to the center and you want to make sure that you don't you, you do the same amount of these little boxes as there are on your reference image so we did the horizontal line next the vertical line Measurements are correct. Here. Here. All right, so now we have that like target shape again. So now next step, make these boxes into X's by connecting these lines. So again, it's like you're duplicating the image. So when we start over, this little box looks like what this whole canvas started out as. So you're just multiplying it until the boxes get smaller and smaller. So connecting these X's, or making the X's. And it really surprises me how many people I've talked to that actually don't know how to do this because it's so much easier than doing all of like, I love math, but to do all of the math and try and make sure every line is perfect, it gets a little confusing. And I also like these horizontal or um, these vertical um, or diagonal, sorry, lines when I'm doing faces because it kind of, not only are you getting up and down boxes, but you're getting these diagonals to make sure that just another reference image or another reference line to make sure everything is accurate. So again, we have the X's. So next, we extend across to these, vertical, horizontal. Do that. And I, I like to extend these lines past just the reference, um, those little lines that I made to like shorten the canvas in a way. All right, so we did it again. So we just duplicated. So now we have all these boxes that need another line to be crossed through it. And again, connecting the corners. So we'll do that. And like I said, this can go infinitely. Like you, you could do this down to like a quarter of an inch. Not that you would want to do it that small, but it's definitely possible. And it will take a few tries. I would definitely recommend uh, practicing this just to make sure you're hitting all the points and your ruler, you're using your ruler correctly. And, super helpful um, when doing portraits, especially if you're doing portraits for people that you don't know. Because, um, I mean, I think when you look at a photo of someone else and you look at your painting, you can think it looks accurately, but then you send it off and it's like, wait, something's off with the eyes or the lips. So this, this is a way I think to keep it much more um, just easier to figure out. All right, so we're gonna go back and look at this. So how I, you wanna count these individual boxes to make sure we have them all. So we have one, two, three, four. So we have four lines or four rows. So we count on here, one, two, three, four. All right, so we match this. So now we can start sketching it out. But like I said, I would definitely recommend if you're doing um, like, more facial features, I would recommend going even smaller than this, maybe 
um, going through the process one or two more times just to make sure you're getting everything correctly. So that is how you do it. And I would just go ahead and I'll, I'll do a little quick kind of tutorial of how I sketch it out. So basically I go from box to box and just kind of uh, organize the shapes and it's super easy to just use the, di I mean, like I said, I love these diagonal lines because it helps so much with making sure everything is accurate. So essentially I'm just drawing a skirt really quick. It just goes through here. So I'm not going to do any more than this, but you can see, I mean, and I usually do it slower, but you can see how the shapes will start to form and you're using these great reference lines to help. So, like I said, I kind of wanted to take a break from um, kind of the uh, fundamentals in a way of being an artist and just give you some practical knowledge. Um, so we're definitely still going to keep talking about the process and how to develop a story through your art because um, I'm super passionate about when you have work being able to speak on it and like Christine said like anyone can be an artist like I think a lot of times you think if you can't draw something that looks realistic you're not an artist which is so false like there's so many amazing abstract artists non-objective artists so I don't want this to like hold anyone back when I'm I'm doing stuff that's more realistic but Christine is doing these beautiful collage little works of art by just mark making which is something I envy so much I love like this painting I have behind me is one that I did recently and it was so freeing for me to just make marks to just throw paint on a massive canvas and see what happens so uh, I think it's also really cool with what we're doing is having um, the three of us as coaches, me, Sophia, and Christine, um, t talk about these, having this like, I guess, cohesive um, conversation, but through the eyes of different artists. Um, so Sophia, again, has more of like that uh, background in the marketing and all of that. So she's coming at it from a business side. I'm coming at it from a plein air artist um, who does more realistic compared to uh, Christine and Christine's had 30 years of experience as a photographer and a painter so I think the three of us um, it's really cool to see like how things evolve and so I hope you learned from this this is something I've had a lot of people ask about and again super easy so I just wanted to put that knowledge out there um, so if you have any questions please email us um, and I hope you guys have some good practice with this and try it out because uh, it's a super fun and easy way to get really great work. So have a good week, guys.